your name that make your life difficult or pleasant, let them fade away. Let every other day fade away. Speak to God. Let every other day. Lift up your hands to heaven. Father, I speak in your name. Every other name around your people, pull it down. Every other name around your people, making their life uncomfortable, I challenge such names now. Let them fade away from your body. In the name of Jesus. Every name that is contrary to the name of Jesus that oppresses you, that harasses you, I rebook now in the name of Jesus. Let every strange name, every strange utterances, every strange declaration that cause a retardation, a setback, a pain, a confusion to you, let them fade away now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Can I hear a Christian amen? You can do much better than that. Hallelujah. That's an amazing song. Dr. Jiffany raised when he came to pray. He just clicked with my spirit. And I started seeing the different lights. It's true. The Bible says God has highly exalted him, giving him a name above every other name that at the name of Jesus. What happened? Every knee should bow and every tongue do what? Confess that Jesus is Lord. So any other name harassing you has to bow on his knees, how to confess that man stood in Acts chapter 3. He says, this man is standing whole today because of faith in the name of Jesus. And today, everyone troubled, you are standing free today. You are standing free today. You are standing free today. Anyone confused, you are standing free today. Why? Because of that exalted name, the name of Jesus. Let every other name fade away. Sing it with all your strength if you can. Let every other name fade away. Can I hear your voice loud and clear? shall it be in the name of Jesus we are closing this service rejoicing celebrating the faithfulness of God hallelujah amen we had an amazing time last week at the long with God you saw the excerpts amazing time great utterances great blessing our two speakers were fantastic. 
the Lord bless you and send you more to us. Matthew 17, verse 14 to 21, we'll be reading together as we stand in honor of God's word. Matthew 17, verse 14 to 21. I shall read verse 14. We all read 15 in that manner to verse 21. Are we ready? And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, verse 15, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and so vexed, for oftentimes he falleth into the fire and often into the water. 16. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove and hence to yonder place, and ye shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Verse 21, everybody. How birth this can go at north out, but by prayer and fasting. Welcome to our prayer. Today is what day of our prayer? 15 days of prayer. How bad this thing goeth not except by fasting and prayer. And for 15 days, we have been fasting, if you have, and we have been praying then anything called impossible will be made possible in this service. Please be seated and let me lay a few principles that will help us. Number one, from verse 14, there is a huge global movement of men in their needs. You may not have a need, but somebody around you have a need. There is a cry for help everywhere. There is a concern in every man's heart. There are men who have reached their end in themselves. I'm so sure this man carrying his son about, look at me if you can. This son was not two years old. Anybody hearing me here? Full grown adult being carried about looking for solution. You have no idea where they've been to. So a heart of compassion is inevitable in generating the power of God. A life you don't feel for, God can send you to them. Are you hearing me? So there's a lot of cry. And you know what it takes to hang around the mountain waiting for when the master will come down. You don't know when. He was busy in a leadership retreat with his disciples. And after a while, released them to go. And he stayed back to tidy up. And while they were there, this man says, if I have seen his member, I have seen him. If I have seen his disciple, I have seen him. 
If this man had been learning from him over the years, then I should have confidence that what the master can do, this one should be able to do it. Are you following my thought line? That if I have seen somebody in the usher who has been in this church for five years, for ten years, I don't need to see the pastor. He's been feeding from him. If I see him, is as good as saying his leader. <clears throat> now if you say I've joined this church for 10 years, I'm a deacon in this church, I'm a pastor in this church, I am this in this church, we started MIV together, then no problem. We're looking for you. Anybody hearing me here? We're looking for you. Stop marking your life with how many years you've been in church. Mark your life with how obedient you've been to what you are hearing. Mark your life with how obedient you have been to the teachings. If a sick man miss me and they meet you, they should get healed. If an oppressed man miss me and they meet you, the oppression should stop. Why? You stay long enough. So the man carried his grown up child, he's thrown him again. The manifestation has come. He fell down near fire, fell inside the waters, and something says to him, Go look for Jesus or his man. He found the disciples, lay him, and said, Lord, I thank you. I can't see Jesus. I learned he's traveled again. I learned he's a busy man. It's okay. I have seen his workmen. I have seen his disciples. Am I making sense to anybody? I have seen men who say they are close to him. Are you hearing me? I've seen men who say we drink from him regularly. It's okay. I didn't see Jesus, but I've seen the head usher. And the head usher can tell the story of when we're in a small church and he was ushering us and we grew to a bigger church. It's been there long enough. Now here's a sick life. Here's an oppressed life. He has a confused life. And those men came and spoke like Jesus spoke, <laughs> but they didn't have the spirit by which he spoke. Did you hear me? You can learn the language of your leader until you share his spirit. You don't get the same result. That's why Elijah said to Elisha, if you see me, if you see what drives me around, if you see why I'm here, I'm there and everywhere, if you see what has kept us relevant, what kept us relevant is not learning new languages, it's a deeper walk with God. Do you see it? Anybody still hearing me? If you see it, so he gave this guy over. They prayed. They did all they could. But they just couldn't get it done. They just couldn't get it done. Then Jesus rebuked them. That's my message to you today. We're looking at fasting and praying. And I'm going to narrow down into that. Look at verse 16 of Matthew 17. It says, I brought him to thy disciples and they could not. Isn't that a pain? That somebody has come to see me and I said, don't worry. Go meet Sister Jumi. She will lay hands on you. She'll be, you'll be fine. And then Sister Jumi prayed from morning till evening. Did you hear me? 
Many years ago in Zaria, um, I went to visit a friend and I saw him sweating when I entered his house. He's pulled off his shirt. He was really sweating, two of them. I said, brother, what happened? He said, we're trying to minister to this brother to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. I said, since when? He said, since morning. How? He said, well, he has not yet to be baptized. They were sweating. Do you understand? There are a lot of things we do as in forms, but no power. Anybody hearing me here? There are many things, and that's why people are getting frustrated at times. You hear somebody tells you, I've been to this man of God, that man of God, that man of God. All of them have laid hand on me. They prophesy. They did everything, but nothing has changed. Not so after this service. I can hear you. Put up your two hands towards me. Not so after this service. Lord, I pray by your spirit, by, by the hands of these great men and women, you will wrought signs and wonders. You will do great miracles. When they lay hand on the sick, they will recover. When they cast out demons, the demons will go. By your life shall mighty things begin to happen. In the name of Jesus. No more waiting for the pastor. The same Lord, the same faith, the same baptism, the same salvation experience. If he be my Lord and is your Lord, the same result. Let every other name fade away. They couldn't cure him. They couldn't challenge the other names. Maybe you are in church and you are feeling sickly yourself now. Let something rise up within you to fight that name called sickness. Because that name can't fail. Verse 17. <coughs> then Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, He's not talking to the man who brought his child. He's not talking to the man. He's not talking to the crowd. Who is he talking to? His disciples. Akilo day. You are counting years. You have been in MIV. No delivery capacity. Only church politics. And this one greets that one. That one didn't greet that one. That one is not this one. You are the one deciding everything. Is that what you came to collect here? May you close this service with a new understanding. Give me verse 17 in message translation. I saw something there when I was studying in message translation. Jesus said, what a generation. No sense of God. It's just religion. No sense of God. You try to get them to pay a price to grow the sense of God. They are not ready to pay it. It's too much for them to pay. They are enjoying conveniences. You don't want to be pushed to do anything more. So there is no sense of God. Look at the next word. No focus. Look at me. Everything you keep looking on continually you see more details if you keep focus. Is that true? That is my strength. It's also my weakness. You might not understand that. <laughs> but that's my strength. My strength because when I keep focus on anything, you can't distract me. No matter how strong you are, you can't. But my weakness is that I suffer other things I need to pay attention to, I don't pay attention to any other thing. In your own. You can't take that away. That's why you had many ministers come here and they said to you, oh, one of the things that endear me to this man of God is that he is consistent. Have you had that language here before? Several times. It's focused. He knows where he's going. That is a strength, but it's also my weakness. At times I forget to eat. Mommy say I ask her. 
Once I see war, she used one Yoruba word for me. She called me Arisha Yo, the man who finds work and is happy. At times I'm not fasting, but it's 9 p.m. I've not eaten since morning. I just find something to do. When you are focused, you see details. When you focus on God, you see what? Details about God. Details about the integrity of his word. Details about what his word can do. How many times do I have to go over these things? Did you see that in message translation? In other words, it look at these guys are his students. The disciples... He starts them over and over. Now it's practical session. Go and do the practical thing. They fail. He comes back again. He teaches them over and over. Now go practice. They fail. We've thought for two months that you will enjoy the supernatural when you are a soul winner. But yet some of you have not won one soul. And you console yourself. So I try. No. How long will I keep repeating classes with you? It's more painful when you repeat classes. I know of us have repeated classes before. I know this inside people will raise their hand now. You fill an exam, that's what to repeat. Anybody like that? Do you know it costs you more to prepare to pass than to pass at once? Who knows what I'm talking about? It costs more. May you stop failing your spiritual classes. Yes, though your amen is suspicious, may you stop failing your spiritual classes. Takes discipline. Say, just repeating classes, you're not passing. They teach you faith, you can practice the faith. We teach discipline, you can practice discipline. We teach prayer, you can practice prayer. That's what happened to these guys. They just keep repeating. So Jesus says, for how long? He said, how many times do I have to go over these things? That's message translation of Matthew 17, 17. How much longer do I have to put up with this? Put this scripture on the screen for me. How much longer you don't know the pain of a pastor. That you are teaching somebody to exercise faith and live a life that is above natural life and the guy keep falling back, keep falling back, keep falling back. It is very frustrating. God bless Bola. Bola is in the UK. Mommy knows Bola. Bola was with us many years ago. Bola secretary, Monso. You remember her now. Bola used to be a big lady in the den in IITA as a secretary. Very big lady. She was here with us. And I was teaching faith. How faith works. Bola is bold. I need more of such bold people. Touch faith. And I say, faith can buy anything, even when your money cannot. I know Bella has a funny attitude. She asked me, Daddy, are you sure? <laughs> I said, yes. You know what she did? She left the meeting. Went to a job market here. Saw someone selling picnic. And said to the woman, I need, I forgot the number of picnic she asked for. I need also a number of pig milk. But this is all I have. Can you please sell to me at what I have? The woman looked at her and said, Only, only, only thief. Come and collect all the milk. Only. Get out! And Bola was going. And the woman called her back. Come back, oh, come back. I don't know if you're an angel. Come and take it. <laughs> come and take it. I don't know if you're an angel. Come and take it. Okay, I think it was six pig milk. And her money could only buy two. He said, bring the money for two. Take the six. I don't know if you're an angel. Just take it. And the brother says, I am an angel of God. And since you have done this, God will bless your business. I will see you next week. 
came back next week the woman says what I have sold in one week I have not sold in one month you must be an angel you want another mix say no 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 I just came to greet you where are those members I'm tired of members who keep hearing me and can't practice anything just say ah, he preached well do I need you to approve that I don't need your approval by the mercy of God I didn't start preaching today. I didn't need that. I need you to go and do what you are hearing. Because that is what I am doing. Do as I do. How long will I be repeating classes with you? How long? You know why? You can walk in the supernatural Nobody full of himself can be full of God. The two don't walk together. The two don't walk together. Nobody who is so full of himself can be full of God. No. You need to empty yourself for God to fill you in and then you can manifest God to men. Do I make sense to you? A proud man can walk in the power of God because he doesn't want to be embarrassed. You know what he says to himself? Supposing nothing happened. I don't want to embarrass myself. I don't want to embarrass myself. Friends, who are you that we should not embarrass you? Embarrass yourself and discover a new dimension in God. It will be a new experience for your lifetime. One of our son came here, was hearing me teach and, his, and I told him, I told him, not that he saw a vision, not that God spoke to him, I told him, I said, Isaac, you have a healing anointing, stretch your two hands to me and I hold Isaac's son, mommy knows Isaac, I heard Isaac's son and said, receive healing grace. He believed it. The boy went to hospital, UCH, he prayed, everyone he prayed for died. Isaac came back here. He said, Daddy, what did I receive? I said, healing anointing. <laughs> he said, everyone I'm praying for, they died. The last time I went to the world, they were afraid for me to even pray for them. I said, that man has come again. I said, Isaac, don't be afraid. Is the devil trying to intimidate you and harass you? Don't bow to that. The word of God cannot fail. Believe it. He did. He went back and prayed. And the one he prayed for, God healed immediately. He went to the next bed. God healed. He came here and said, Ah, Oman Shisha is walking. I said, I'm telling you, he's walking. Today, Isaac have a very profound healing anointing. A healing ministry, and he says to me, It works. How? He just had me preach. He just had me say, Give me your two hands. I've prayed for some of you on your two hands before. What did you use the hand to do? To cook semo with okra soup. That's the end of my anointing your palms. Back to square one. For how long? <coughs> You don't know the joy of a preacher, the joy of a pastor. They're having a congregation practicing what you are teaching them and they are returning with testimonies and you are very excited yourself. I said, yes! In this ministry, we've had our ushers in the past, they handle healings and deliverance. Favor, you remember that. Ushers, they are the people who are handling healing and deliverance. What happened to the usher we have today? Apart from working stylishly to collect our offering, can you also work stylishly and deliver God? We've had choir that I was preaching. You are aware of that. I was preaching and I just felt a resistance in my spirit. And I said, Wale, raise a song. You all know Pastor Wale. While he raised a song and right in his spirit, he raised a song. We don't even know the song. Only him knows what he was singing. And demons started manifesting. 
But when choir are fighting themselves, how can God be there? Looking for who is superior, who is less superior, who is this, and you are dividing your camp. How can God be there? For how long will I teach you the power of unity to deliver God? Petting around little, little, little thing. And this one look at me this way, that one look at me that way. That didn't, that's nonsense. That's not why you came to church. You came to learn how to make God known to your generation. How long I want to see Dickens raising the dead? Ha! Huh. I want to see great things happen. How long will I teach you these things? Reverend Emiko Musuka came here and he says he's been going around many churches in this city. There is no church that teach the word of God like MIV. He said it openly here. He said the word of God is here. Where are the students of the word? Where are the practitioners of what you are hearing? I've come to challenge you. I don't mind if I can finish this. We'll continue this some other time. But sufficient that we got stuck here, we didn't even get to the point of fasting and praying. Is that okay? We're going to have a great time in the second service. If you are persuaded to wait for the second service, we're going to look at the man Daniel in the second service. It's going to be amazing. But sufficient here. You see the frustration of Jesus. Let's read it together again for the last time as we pray. Message translation on the screen. Matthew 17, 17. Shall we all read everybody? Jesus said, what a generation. No sense of God. No focus to your lives. How many times do I have to go over these things? How much longer do I have to put you up with this? Bring the boy here. Stand with me. For how long will sickness harass us? For how long? For how long? You are to heal the sick. You are the one being sick. You are to cast out demons. You are the one being oppressed by demons. How long? You are to have a major breakthrough in your career business. But it's your business going down. And you are wondering what's going on here. You are to have a fantastic home, but it's your home that is a third world war all the time, fighting on very useless things because there is no word of God to even guide your decisions in the home. You are the one to make God known. What did I do for God? That since I left school, I don't remember how many years now. Every year, the new set of executives that come on campus, they read my account of exploits. And they come to my office here and said, we read about you when you're on campus. You did this. You did this for God. How can we do it? I'll say, all of you kneel down. Pray with them. Teach them. Challenge them. What can you do? And I can remember you for, for life. So we once have a son in this house. That's what he did. Kola, you know Kola. Kola was our missionary here before we released him. Kola was being sent away from the mission field. Because it was a full Muslim community. So we don't like this guy. Well, he just must go. Kola told them, I can't come back and face me in the office that they sent me away. Kola stood in the market square in the village and God opened his eyes to see the crippled woman 
sitting by the tree. She's been crippled for years. Anyone who goes to that market knows that crippled woman. And God says, I will raise this boy, this crippled woman, if you go and pray for him, for her. In the market, Kola went. Why was he doing that? He was afraid to come back and tell me that he was dismissed from the community he was serving. Today, most of you are not afraid to come and tell me you failed. You're not afraid to come and tell me, we say, do this meeting. Say, we did it, but in Kakosha, the clamor, she see. That's why nothing is being provoked in your spirit to perform. Something was in that young boy. Says, I can't face you. Because I know if you are the one here, it will make a lot of difference. And for that, he entered into that dimension of the miraculous. Kola went prayed for the crippled woman. And she stood up and walked. That woman had been crippled for all her life. She's not a young woman again. God stretched her leg. She walked. The entire village, Muslims, carried Kola on their head and took him to the chief and said, you can't send this boy away. It's useful. See the woman. Muslims gathered their money and built MIV a church with Islamic money. They built a church. That church is still there till today. They built it for us. And when Kola came home and told me the story, I said, Nilda, my heart blesses you more. Lay hands on this guy. Today, Kola is doing some tremendous ministry all over the world. I'm asking you. You've just had me preach now. Will you go look for the sick? 